Okay, so today's video is going to be on feeding your ball python. Um, so last night I just took, um, we keep her rats in the freezer. Um, and then I just take it out of the freezer, put it in its own little baggie, and put it on a plate and just let it thaw overnight and during the next day. And then before I go to feed her, maybe half an hour before, I just take a, a container or a pot or something like that. The rat, you can see it's like, it's cold, but I mean, it's not frozen anymore. So you wanna get it up to the right temperature now. So, just gonna let the tap run to get hot. I use some stones to weigh it down because you want it to get as hot as possible. Well, as warm as possible, sorry. Um, but you don't want to cook the rat because snakes cannot digest um, cooked meat. So you just want to get it hot like it would be if it were alive. So then I just put some warm to hot water in here. Do not microwave. No, do not ever microwave your rat. I don't care what anybody ever says, do not do that. Um, cause then the skin starts to split, you end up with like, it's just, it's, it's a mess and you'll kill your snake. You don't want to so let that sit for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then I will, sorry, I'm just going to dry my hands. Um, then I'll empty out the water and I will do it again. Um, just to get it as warm as I can. And then I'll show you how you test to see if it's warm enough. Um, when we come back. So I'm just gonna let that sit and I will come back and show you how we test for the warmth. Okay. Okay. So I've changed the water like two or three times. And you take the rat out. It's all wet. But basically, you can tell like he feels like warm body. It's what a rat would feel like if you were to pick them up and they were alive. But you need to feel the organs, try to feel up under the ribs, the head. Make sure that there's no, you don't feel anything frozen. And then I've been told snakes don't like wet food. Ours has actually dragged hers through the water before. She doesn't really care, but I still just give it a bit of a dry. Some paper towel. Okay, and we'll take it on up to her and we'll show you how to feed. Ready? Okay, so it's feeding time. She's up looking for food, but you can see she's relatively, <laughs> she's sticking, sliding down the glass. the glass, but you can see she's relatively calm right now. She doesn't smell the rat. Um, what we do here, I want to bring that over here, is we give it a blast with the hair dryer, um, mostly around the head because the head is what they strike first. So you want to get that up to a hot temperature, what a live one would be like, but it also, you blow the scent towards her and it helps to get her into a feeding mode, which you will see. There she goes. See? She's biting the top. I'm just gonna get the lid ready. Okay, so basically I've blasted the head. I've got it nice and hot the way it would be. Uh, I do not, now that she's in feeding mode, <laughs> I'm not putting my hands in that tank. There's a difference between a hungry snake and one in feed mode, and she's in feed mode now. So, come here. 
Over here. Over here. She's going up to the heat light because that's a heat source. Honey. <laughs> She's never actually done this before, sweetheart. Come here. Look. There we go. Here we go. Over here. Right here. And she's got it. Wraps around, strangle it. She, yeah, it, she doesn't know that it's not a live rat because it's hot, so she is, what she's doing, she's constricting, um, and she will sit like that for a couple minutes to make sure she's killed it, and then she will try to find the head. So basically, we feed frozen thawed. It is so much safer than feeding live. If you Google, um, rat bites on snakes from live feeding. I mean, some of the pictures are absolutely horrific. It can even kill your snake. Um, once the rat realizes its life is in danger, they tend to get really nasty. So we feed her frozen thawed. Um, the way they thaw, uh, freeze them is they gas them. They CO2 gas them first, put them to sleep, and then they freeze them. So it's totally humane. Um, she being the size she is and being a female, she could be on a small rat every, I guess, once a week. Um, I give her small mediums, so her rats are between 110 to 120 grams, and I give her once a week. I probably could do once every two weeks, but she's pretty hungry by the end of the week. Um, she's never refused a meal for us. Sometimes if you are feeding every week and the prey is pretty big, they will eventually refuse a meal, kind of go on a bit of a, a fast. Um, but, I mean, they should go back to eating. Um, one trick is uh, ball pythons are known to be very picky eaters. So if you're having trouble uh, getting them to feed, one trick is to um, apparently, uh, sorry, apparently um, gerbils are like crack to snakes. So what you can do is uh, go to a pet store, you, obviously you don't want to be feeding them gerbils, that's just kind of sad. So you would just say to them, like, do you mind, can I just have a handful of the bedding from a gerbil tank? And then you go home and you can rub that on the rat, the mouse, whatever you're feeding the snake, and it gets the scent of the gerbil on it, and that sometimes will stimulate your snake into eating. Um, so, yeah, she... Uh, she will probably, after she's eaten, we do not touch her for 48 hours. Some people do 24, we do 48. Um, just leave her alone. The only time we would go in there is just to change her water and mist. We don't touch her, we just let her be. Um, occasionally, if there is some blood from the rat, or for instance, if we left the plate that we brought the rat in, like we did last time, uh, we'd forgotten the plate, she can go into an extended feed mode. So it was about... 48 hours after we had fed her, I came in to change her water. She was in the classic S shape, ready to strike. She was sort of going at the glass, striking at the glass. And I thought, okay, she's just extended feed mode. Just leave her alone for another day. Um, realized the plate was in there. It's obviously going to smell like the rat. So took it out and she was fine. Um, it's all just basically common sense. Um, before we had fed her, I had my hands in there right next to her, changing her water, knowing she's hungry, but again, she hadn't been stimulated into feeding mode. Um, another trick, uh, if your snake tends to be a little bit tricky to get them to want to eat, you can, if, if, if you're feeding live, you can put the cage with the live animal next to the snake cage, or if you're feeding frozen, you can let it sort of thaw for a little while next to the snake cage, they kind of get the scent. Um, but yeah, that's basically how we do it. Um, let it thaw in the fridge overnight, warm it up with some warm water, then give the head a blast with a hair dryer. Some people use a thermometer to make sure it's the precise exact temperature, but I mean... I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Yep. You can see now she's... she thinks it's dead, she's held it long enough, and she went straight to the head. Uh, that's one of the reasons we heat up the head more before we give it to her. It makes it easier for her to find the head. Um, and she's gobbling it down head first. Has she got the head right now? Yep. 
Awesome. She's a bit of a, a dink and sometimes she grabs it sometimes wrong. Sometimes she has trouble finding um, the head. She'll maybe grab it by the <laughs> neck or she'll grab it by the leg and then she'll try to eat it neck first or leg first and she realizes, oh, can't do that. And it can take her quite a while to find the head. But she always finds it. Yeah, she does always find it. We tend to just make sure she's got the head, she's got the head down, and then we leave her alone, give her her privacy, just let her do her snake thing. Um, I do have videos of her up uh, feeding from when we first got her. Um, yeah, that's basically it, um, and she will do her little snake poops wherever, whenever she feels like she needs to do them. Sometimes it'll be the next week or two weeks, um, you'll be quite surprised. It's, we have chihuahuas and it's quite often bigger than our chihuahua poop. Um, yeah, another trick actually if your snake, uh, it's, is not wanting to eat, um, Sometimes the frozen rats, it's actually, we've been lucky. We've had a few of them that when you thaw them, maybe the nose will start to bleed a bit. And that also really helps with uh, feed mode. They're, they're um, attracted to that. So you could always, I guess, with your frozen rat, once it's thawed, just, it, it sounds horrible, but make its nose bleed a little bit. And um, that's one way to do it. So yeah, it's kind of awkward for her to eat that rat right now. She's hanging in the tree, but she's, been in awkward positions before she'll just go to wherever she needs to go to get the snake down um when we she first just moved so she moved she'll get it yeah when we first got her it took her a good 15 20 minutes to eat a rat it now usually takes her less than 10 sometimes five um i think that's everything so we're gonna give her her does she have the whole head down pretty much the okay. head yeah so we're just going to give her her privacy, let her finish the rat, and that's how we do feeding. We will leave her alone other than just water changes and misting her tank for the next two days. And uh, we'll see you once she's digested.